My whole being hurts every time I have to spend ETH, and ETH is the thing that, like, I have to spend ether all the time, almost every day. And yet, sometimes this Why is just like spend, a why? sort of... Why do you have to spend Because ETH? I have to buy these fucking JPEGs, man. <laughs> Yo, take out, take <laughs> out a loan buy... on Aave, like a real man. Put your ETH down oh, and just borrow more ETH. You, that sounds you just told me the other day, real men don't Financial take advice, or use it. leverage. You just said... <laughs> just two hot takes in one. Look... <laughs> The, the thing is, like, I, hate I constantly feel I hate spending it. And even though I know it's not intended to to be like Bitcoin, it feels like spending Bitcoin every time. It feels like I'm taking this wonderful, incredible store of value that everything is going to bleed against and spending it on stupid if things. If you think that's the that case. I, and I gamble. It, it, yeah, like if you're not if you're not really you're confident enough to that. like borrow ETH against your ETH to buy JPEGs, I'm sort of, then you I'm sort probably of making shouldn't be spending of, it in the first place, you know? I'm sort of making fun of myself to illustrate a point. That's yeah. what I'm trying to do here. It's like so many of us continually perpetually keep doing that when in reality like the the better play is probably just stack and don't depends, touch it. It just depends how good you are. It's a lot of yeah. uh man Maybe some of the stories Lord. about these NF Dude, god I I saw the story somewhere about this like uh actually my buddy told me about it this like uh, NFT trader who is he went from buying ETH with his unemployment checks to running it up to twenty million dollars trading Ooh. NFTs? <laughs> I mean, he was, he was just getting his COVID. Uh, he was just slipping all of his COVID unemployment into ETH, and then he parlayed that. What a beast! Into NFTs, and then just started flipping, and then he's got twenty mil. <laughs> but this is absurd. Like something like this should make us like just stop and go, "What the fuck? What do you mean? How is that possible?" But we hear these stories every day. And that is insane that it exists in this market. Like this opportunity, this but it, it, level. it doesn't. It probably doesn't exist anymore. And I think, I think that's it, like an it, important it existed. point. It existed. Right? It sure. existed at a time where nobody was sitting here at a podcast like this talking about how amazing ETH was. The opportunity existed because ETH was eighty dollars, and everybody was talking about how it was going to zero. Right. So those are the environments where you make thousand X gains. Right. So everybody oh, coming Wolf into game the market was just two now, weeks ago. you know. Yeah, yeah, I beg to differ on that. I think it's like we have no idea what is ahead and and what is possible oh, in terms man. of thousands. Oh, we games. have a, we have a we have a general idea, right? Wolf like game if we, was like if uh, we can make broad assumptions uh, about the crypto market and about the majors and like where can we, we are talk in the about cycle, Wolf game? you know, Wolf game. Sure. Can we dive into that one? It's sort of like a new iteration on NFTs. I think that it brought a new element into it in a world where like in an NFT world where there is no new innovation, like they did something new for once. We should just talk I mean, about I think like they NFT actually games went, in general, I think, right? Yeah, look, they they uh, created a new standard. They created a five token game. Like they combined coin, ERC, like, I don't know. I just think like there was, you have, you have wool, you have the sheep, you have the wolf, you have, um, God damn! What was the uh, uh, the uh, the land the farmer? The <laughs> yeah, the farmer <laughs> and the land five token system, and you created like something in that game with like that went so far beyond anything that was in the realm of like I know there were other P to E play to earn games, but I just don't think that anybody was able to get. Well adoption across the industry as a whole like wolf game did it was i know the, we're talking specifics but would you, would well, you consider wolf game to be a play to earn nick i think it like a we're, casino we're playing we're um, playing like uh fast and loose with play to earn i think yeah yeah i mean like uh you know axie infinity is like a pure play play to earn but like you know you were yeah, I think everybody playing refers and gambling to, to 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 earn i guess um but like i think the 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 blurring of the lines comes in that he had like a, a risk protocol essentially right like two smart contracts or nfts one could probabilistically steal from the other and that that was new is like whoa there's some game should, should we should we give people context on what the hell wolf game is well yeah you, you brought it up to us so you might as well give a quick breakdown of it like oh wow, i almost yeah. forgot that yeah yeah you dropped the alpha help. in the chat <laughs> that is for sure <laughs> um yeah i yeah, guess do it do it steven i mean you, you oh, oh i'm doing it okay so for anybody yeah. who doesn't know what wolf game is 
Wolf game is, I'm just going to say it, it's a, it's an elaborate Ponzi scheme packaged up in a way where it's just like really fun to participate in the Ponzi scheme. Right. Right. So it's sort of blurring the line on what is a Ponzi and what is a game and what is just like utility. Right. Like we all play blackjack and we play craps and like, those are losing endeavors. Right. And people are like, those have no value to society, blah, 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 blah. But a lot of people say like, no, they do have value because even though you're a guaranteed loser, the entertainment is worth the price of admission and it's so fun, right? So it kind of blurs the line. But so Wolf Game is an NFT project where the NFTs can sort of be staked and like earn you a token called Wool, which could actually be sold for like real ether. And it sort of takes a bunch of mechanics from DeFi, right? And repackages them into NFTs. The concept of staking a token and earning more tokens for free, you know, quote unquote, um, depending on where you got in, uh, it's, it's, it's highly addictive. So you could buy a sheep and you could stake your sheep in the barn and that sheep would produce you like 20,000 wool tokens a day. And then you could suddenly sell those wool tokens for 20 cents a pop. And then people were like, wait a minute, my sheep is producing $4,000 a day. I guess the sheep is worth $15,000 now. And then, you know, the market started going ham. And then the game had this other interesting element to it that I hadn't seen before in an NFT game, which is that it had this other token, you know, the wolf or NFT. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the wolf interacted with the sheep and that it could like steal sheep and steal wool. So it sort of was not like a pure Ponzi scheme in that there was, you know, it, it's like a gambling game that is solvable but that nobody has solved yet. In the long run, that game is sort of zero EV. And, you know, it's just sort of who gets in first and gets out of the Ponzi and it relies on new money perpetually coming in before it collapses, right? right. But you could mm -hmm. certainly argue that in Wolf Game, it was sort of like being the first person to play poker or to play blackjack or something and the casino didn't know how to play blackjack against you yet and everybody was just figuring the rules out. And that was certainly the case. Like people were definitely making decisions in Wolf Game with how they played the game, quote unquote, via what they bought, what they sold, when they staked, when they unstaked, that were definitely suboptimal. So you were definitely playing that game if you were sharp and you understood the tokenomics of it and how it played out. You were definitely making money. Now, right. I expect like all other innovations in the crypto space, this is going to get it already has gotten knocked off a thousand times. Everybody's going to get good at playing the wolf games and they will return progressively less and less and less over time as people's strategies become kind of more, you know, game theoretic optimal. And then eventually they will just sort of devolve into pure Ponzi's. Right. But the line could still get blurred. Right. Like if, if this like anonymous shepherd guy who runs the game, is able to actually produce like a game from this that people want to play to just play the game or at least partially to play the game and not purely to earn then you can kind of you know cross the chasm there and argue that it's not a ponzi anymore like people want to play the game and that in and of itself has utility and because people wants to play the game it will create demand for the wool token which will give it economic value, which will stabilize the price, right? So like it, it, it is possible that these things could evolve to be like actual sustainable things. People obviously should just like have open eyes that they're probably just really fun Ponzi schemes that they may in fact have an edge on in the short run, right? I don't wanna say you don't have an edge, but like to think that like you can just like stake virtual sheep and print money forever for with no other options is, 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 is obviously silly. But like, I personally am like really excited by these things. Also terrified, right? They're going to be like mm -hmm. crack cocaine to people. People love to gamble and they love NFTs and they love to play games. And like, once we start getting these things on like the layer twos where the gas is really cheap and it doesn't cost $4,000 to play the game. Like I could really see stuff like this taken off like, wildfire and i can see people creating some really crazy elaborate games and i can definitely see people losing like a lot of money and bringing right. the wrath of the regulators down for sure and it, it's going to be quite the wild ride and I'm, I'm sure in the meantime some people will make like tons of money and some people will like you know obviously lose money it is sort of zero sum at the end of the day you know it's a negative sum when you factor in the enormous transaction costs and the enormous cost of gas currently it's the thing I think a lot of people don't factor into NFTs, like the 
the the the, the slippage and the gas is like yeah it's absolutely insane you have to have like a huge edge to actually make money which a lot of people do because it is inefficient but like holy shit it's the it's the wild west right now for sure I, th- I think if these games like continue to provide utility, they can transition from like, like you're saying, like a Ponzi game into mm-hmm. like a real game, like just in the casino, kind of like your analogy, yeah. like you can take your chips and go to the roulette table and then take your chips there and go play blackjack and then go to the craps table. Like as long as they create more utility uh, for that token, it could, it could do really well. And like it maybe maybe the playbook, the Wolf game playbook is a good like uh, startup, you know, kind of like crowdfunding for for a game in a way to like, you know, distribute tokens to people and then then add utility and then mm. you know the games game starts. Yeah, that that's a good take. That's like a really interesting way to raise money for a game to build a community and, and distribute you know? without a token sale too, which yeah. you know mm-hmm. could instantly yes. constitute yes. you as a security. So like, hey, here's this thing, stake it. We're gonna you're gonna get tokens. You don't know what they're used for yet, but like, trust me, kind of thing. <laughs> and you know that's basically what he's saying he's like trust me you're gonna you're gonna really like what you can use wool on it's like okay like i'm willing to ride down this path with you and see see what it is I mean, maybe you're right maybe nfts are just some backdoor around securities laws if you if you do them this way. Would you like, say oh that? you're not you're not so i haven't i haven't uh played the risky or safe game yet have you guys selected already Oh, you it looked like it was, it's going to expire soon, right? Yeah, it seemed like it was pretty clear, positive EV to always go. Well, you go obviously go should play the the risky yeah. game unless you're a huge nit. <laughs> so this is a good this is a good test though. So like uh, to see how degenerate people actually are. So like uh, essentially the, the you know Wolf game broke and uh, this, the sheep stopped earning wool and he needed to do some kind of migration, whatever. It came to a breaking point in the game where. Um, now you're at the point where you can keep 80% of the wool that your sheep has earned, or you can play risky game and basically have a coin flip for a potentially much larger amount of wool or, or nothing. And so I'm really curious to see how many people play it because it'll just tell you how degenerate people uh, on a, si- really on a are side note, scenarios. I played the game and I can't figure out how much wool I got. Do they give you the results, uh, right away? No, you won't know until play right the now. time periods up. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But, but to, all to, the your, wolves, to your point, the wolves to your point, find this, out how much this they is get a good eat. example of like why these games can actually be plus EV, right? Like it's clearly positive expected value for people to just play the game and gamble, and then everybody who doesn't play the game basically just gives like a twenty percent rake to all the people who play. They the subsidize, game, yeah. You know, so there is like a blurry line and like what is a game and what is a Ponzi and what it's like. And I think this line's going to keep getting. And whether blurry, you're the house it's gonna be, in, the, yeah. in the casino mm. game, you know, sometimes you yeah. might actually be the house in some of these scenarios. Um, Nick, I'm, I'm curious how you've been playing this and, and like your whole take on this. I know you look at these things on such a incredibly like nuanced level in terms of how you play anything. You're, you're really funny like that where, you are willing to gamble and play the games necessary, but the level of thought you put into your decisions is probably in the 99th percentile of anybody. But yet you love to gamble, you love to play, you love yeah, to play fun. the game. So like, how are you How are you playing this? Well, I mean, I think it's, uh, we have like a, a little benefit because we get to bounce some ideas off of the thread and, you know, and like yeah. uh, gang up on uh, Excel spreadsheets on whether this thing is really uh, positive EV or not. I mean, I kind of sold most of the assets leading up into that, to that peak we, we, we were talking Same. about on the phone. So I kind of cashed out uh, most of it, but I did uh, take a lot of the profits and, and buy land. And basically it's like a bet that this thing will actually have utility, you know, you, in, and there will be some kind of activity. When you look at the, um, the volume um, of the game itself, it's actually pretty ridiculously high. And at these decision points, the volume of the game like escalates. And so if you think about the future of the game, if the future of game exists on land, the main concept of land is that maybe it takes some kind of tax on all the economic activity. So I'm basically betting that not whether people are going to make money or lose money, but that there's going to be like a ton of activity, right? There's going to be a ton of like back and forth and hopefully, uh, you know, landowners, and it sounds so silly that we're even talking about this, but the landowners <laughs> make, make a good amount of money because... Um, you know, there's people losing and, and, and winning, but regardless, you're taking a rake 
on on all of it. So I'm trying to bet that uh, basically high tr- high trading volume in the game because these these guys are creating really good these game theory decision <laughs> points to play with. So, Wait, I just yeah. I just calculated it and it's it's literally the exact same EV either way for me. That can't be true. There's no tax. There's a tax when you don't play the game. Oh, I'm not taking into account the tax. It would be the yeah, exact twenty percent. That's twenty percent lower going yeah. safe. Okay. It's quite the hefty tax. I mean, it's not that bad. To, to your to your to your point, mm-hmm. Nick, this is obviously getting a little in the wolf game weeds, right? I think that land was trading at like 0.15 at one point, and sheep were trading at like 0.45. And if you're like long term bullish on the game at all in the slightest, that ob- seems like an obvious mispricing, right? Because there was supposed yeah. to be what like 80, 90 thousand sheep and there's like way fewer parcels of land so the idea that like a sheep would be worth like three or four times the land in the game you know is, Which by, is, by the way yeah, guys exactly. like the the game that is actually like doing more volume right now is the wizard game so yes yes did, did any of you guys do the wizard game no no i did bear wizards game. Bear i did bear game, game and my bear I heard, just ate i heard itself. bear game was not good it was so it was bad, bad. It was bad. Yeah, but we have we have two million salmon. I don't know what that means, but we have it. So <laughs> consolation so, prize. So actually, so so honestly, I think this is an important thing to just highlight. Like, you know, one resulted in um, some of our friends making six, even I think one or two made seven figures. Okay. It was okay. like it was like a straight up like hundred x. Like if you time the game, well. yeah, it was pretty. Yeah. Crazy, you know, it was pretty and, nutty. And on the surface, and on and the other, and the one I'm referring to is Wolf Game, and the other was Bear Game. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it like a rug pull, uh, but soft shit rug? hit the fan. Yeah, soft rug. That's fair. I think it was like built in uh, term. Rug. Soft rug. It was built. Yeah, yeah. It was it was built in. A negligent, negligent rug. Oh, yeah. You they know, didn't fix any that's, of the that's, that's vulnerabilities. That's kind of a soft. That's a soft. That's a soft rug in my book. It's a soft rug, and so I think just like when you're looking at this outside, looking in, and you're like, wait a second, like your first exposure to this whole space is like, I, I told you guys, I think I texted you guys, like I got multiple texts about Wolf Game, very <laughs> smart people who I even sent you guys like screenshots of like, and, and some of you know them and they're like, they're wanting to take the first step and they're wanting to get into this game. And that could have been bear game or wizard game or whatever the fuck game. And they could have had a terrible experience or they could have had a great experience. The difference, what I'm driving at is the difference between all of these things. And right now we're just touching on these Ponzi games to Steven's point within the NFT space. On the surface, there's, it's it's impossible unless you can actually go into a technical level of analysis and understand the smart contracts and look at the code to understand what's really going on here. For the yeah. for the ninety nine percent of people, we're gonna get typically fucked, or or just because we missed time it, or it, you yeah. mint this thing, and we most of the people in our world minted this thing and won. Because it's, it, it is, in, in my opinion, please correct me if I'm wrong, it's kind of difficult to lose when you're minting one of these things. Like, it's a negligible cost to me. I'm like, whatever. I, it, depends on, it depends yeah. on the project for Yeah, for sure. I, pay, I, I don't mind paying 0.069 or whatever it is to, to learn a lesson, in other words. The, the, yeah. if, um, if you're minting something that rapidly sells out, the indication is that demand is far in excess of the mint price and you'll probably at least in the short term make money and the reason we were able to mint this one was because it was like a stealth launch and like i had like a tip off about it from like a very knowledgeable friend of mine and beyond like the technicals of the game right like when you do nfts like it is really important for people to realize that there are like a lot of like connected insiders in the space who are getting inside information and having tip offs that so and so is minting this so and so is going to play this game so and so is going to like show this nft right so you have to understand where you are on the informational totem pole right and if you're not you know towards the bottom of it you know if you're not getting like firsthand info then you know you can still do nfts and play you just have to understand that there's more risk and you might want to like take profits earlier you might not be as early right. as you think you are you know Ponzi's reward early early guys 
So there's a take that came out by Bloomberg that just got absolutely like lit up in, in uh, what is crypto this? Twitter. So small group of insiders is reaping most of the gains on NFTs studies study shows. Backtrack Highly sophisticated investors get most of the NFT profits colon study chain analysis chain analysis report says early access via whitelist helps, helps. duh duh, uh, <laughs> duh. <laughs> so, I, also, I also have uh, a problem with that second headline like you can apply that second headline to anything in any sort of anything markets. so oh, i do highly to your point Stephen, get most of I, uh, vc gains i do have a problem with this entire narrative being pushed by this article but did you not just say something that is kind of in line with it in that that insider that's what just pushed me to pull up this article like you just used the word insider so i, mean, I am it's, playing it's devil's advocate true. here yeah well i don't think you're playing devil's advocate you're you're just saying you're just validating what i you're said echoing. I, I think what i said yeah. is like true am i echoing no i'm no. saying armand's echoing your point oh, oh okay i thought i was like i thought this mic was pretty good but <laughs> yeah I, yeah i am echoing i am echoing i think these uh this this wolf game example though will will have some like longer term takeaways i do think there's something really interesting for bootstrapping utility i think it's like a good formula for it like gala games uses it they have like a thing called a founder's node where you buy the founder's node it puts off some set of tokens and you can use those tokens to buy more gala gala nodes and then you can use it eventually like more utility in, in the game and i think like uh that formula is right for for using in, in other other projects and then like how much you can just like have fun putting game theory and gambling and like these different risk protocols and the probabilistic nature of smart contracts the way they interact with each other is very really interesting and um yeah just how crypto gaming too will 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 pull people in very easily then yeah you know some i mean moon coin or whatever i feel like we're issuing sort of like a psa to nft buyers but like there, there probably should be one and then like i i love nfts and i'm like super bullish on them on like the macro perspective but like People need to understand like a NFTs are so different from like buying like a random stock or like buying Bitcoin, right? Like if you buy Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin is like set by the market. If you buy like a random stock, the price of the stock is set by the market, right? Um, and if you need to get out, you have liquidity, right? Like NFTs are totally different. Like the price you buy an NFT at could be so easily manipulated the float on these things is very 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 small um so the the other edge of this coin is that if you're like a really savvy investor you can get an enormous edge trading nfts right you can make tons mm -hmm. of money trading nfts if you know what you're doing right so there's basically no edge one way or the other for anybody buying bitcoin you just throw a dart at a wall you buy bitcoin and that's it right but nfts are totally different right you can't necessarily just randomly buy nfts there's a lot that goes into them in determining whether you are or aren't profitable it's a million variables it's much more complicated and when you make the wrong decisions you can't get out right so i do worry a lot of people are going to get into nfts because they're like really really popular and they are fun and they are like super interesting and i, I totally understand why people do them and, and love them but it also is like really dangerous. Like if you are approaching them from like a, I need to make money perspective with money that you can't like afford to lose, like you can definitely get wrecked because they can be manipulated super easily. Inside information is super, super critical. You can gain huge edges doing things like using wallet tracking services like Nansen AI and all these other, mm -hmm. there's so many things that like a somewhat savvy investor can do to get a huge edge in the NFT marketplace. That's the equivalent doesn't really exist in like Bitcoin or traditional stocks. But that means that in this game, which is basically zero sum, that the passive people are getting more wrecked than they might be in like a normal market, you know, I, unless you're buying will, like a really established project. I, I will sign that alpha alpha PSA. Yeah, hmm. I think that's a really important one um, for sure. And I think it's unfortunate because it is the entry point for so many people and it is a really fun and exciting space and, and probably the way that most people will get involved that are at least in our like age bracket slash, you know, generation 
um but do it for the right reasons like I, I just think like most people are coming into this for the money, especially with NFTs. I think if you're trying to make money, buy, buy the coins, like buy Bitcoin, buy Ethereum. Like it doesn't make sense to me to try to flip NFTs because unless you are a very sophisticated trader, it's very difficult to find that edge. And most likely you're going to get you're going to get fucked. most likely. Yeah. But yeah, it's like, it, yeah, I mean, but everybody thinks they're a good trader, or, you know, whatever that means in NFTs. And that's the problem. Like, I, I will say, like, objectively speaking, like, if you want to put in the grind work and you are good and you're willing to take some thumps, there's probably nothing that can give you like an edge like NFTs can give you. And like most people who don't have like experience in traditional markets, like you don't need to know how to chart or do any of this. Like it doesn't really matter in NFTs. It's a very, it's a highly socially driven thing. It's about being mm -hmm. well connected and getting into inner circles and like kind of getting access yeah. to information that others aren't privy to. And like, it takes time to develop those connections. It's very different, different from like trading Bitcoin, right? So if that's like what your strength is as a person, then yeah, and you want to make money and you're comfortable with the risks, then yeah, NFTs are cool. But like if you're just like kind of Joe Schmo middle of the road and you're just like, oh, I want to buy NFTs to make money, but you're not putting a lot of work in it and you're like, you're, you're going to get wrecked, right? And the exception would be like if you buy more blue chippy type, like like bored apes or like crypto punks aren't like Should we buy massively punks right manipulated, now? right? But they Great also question, cost Nicholas. like- yeah, that's a, it's a good follow up, right? This is the problem with NFTs, though. Like, there's no entry NFTs. You're either playing these lotto no. ticket mints or you're spending upwards of like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, like just for like an entry yeah. into a project that's not like uber manipulated. And, you know, um, but the mints are tricky. Like, the mints are the essence of all the insider stuff and all the shenanigans that go on, like, right after them. Like, Right. You know, but they Got are. It. So yeah, people like a we're going to aspect. We're going to partner with Bloomberg. Then we're doing a 180 on this. I like it. So, Nick, do we buy crypto punks? Like there's obviously been a lot of commotion lately with with uh, the Creative Commons talk, with the no rights reserve talk, with people wanting the IP here. Yeah, I mean, makes I me feel like we're, you've, we're you've peak fear. Uh, crypto punk. What's the which, floor right now? 75. Oh, back up. Wow. Back up. I mean, uh, we, we, we put the average sales price on the uh, on the chart there. And we it looked in the like mid-60s well, yesterday, it? I think, at one point. Right. We we dipped below what was the equivalent of the like 20-week moving average for like median sales price of punks. Uh, so, I love charting. I love charting <clears throat> NFTs. It's fun. It just gives you like an excuse to choose the decision you're already going to choose anyway. You're like, uh, man, I really want to buy some more. You put it on a chart, and like I can see it in the chart. Works perfectly. I think there's like some merit uh, to it. I don't think it's a complete meme. No, it's for, not, for established it's products, like, projects. It's like uh, you see what you want to find. Typically, yeah. um, I mean, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I think Charts, the narratives are all strong, against yeah. it right now, which uh, makes me want to buy. Um, hmm. Armand, would you rather have 75 ETH or a floor punk? Ooh, see, that's. I don't know. Fuck. 75 ETH. The ETH is yeah, so 75 compelling. 75 ETH. 75 ETH. Yeah. Well, my, hmm, you know, punks, punks sell. Like, that's that's one. Like, it's a floor punk. If I need it, if I need the ETH, I can sell it. That's one benefit there. Um, I know most NFTs are illiquid to Steven's earlier point, and that is something for people to keep in mind, but, like, you know, like I, I, I wanted I wanted to I owned many NFTs, but I still felt like I didn't have a solid profile pick and a access to the community that I wanted, which was the Bored Ape community. So I was like, all right, Bored Apes, like, can I really justify spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a Bored Ape? No, not at this point, especially with what I'm seeing with ETH. So Mutant Apes makes equal bakes like all right that's my entry point like that made sense to me but i still uh didn't like it like i didn't like you know I, I i just would rather hold eth in so many ways for so many reasons um but the danger of holding eth is it, it's, it's back to that conversation of like it has this utility and i am constantly being pulled to spend it on something whether it's like bado or <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it could be yeah. anything. It can be anything. It comes up like you, the you next. Totally diverged from me. I was I was with you, and then I was like, yeah, it's got this utility. You can earn interest, and then you're like, you could spend it, and I was like, no. <laughs> <And> that's. <laughs> but that's I that's you're what getting the into the opportunity people, cost. No, 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 not that kind. Yeah, no, uh, you're talking about good utility. Yeah. I'm talking about what pulls us away from the true reason of. of Bro, like, you yeah. just gotta stake it. Just lock it. I up. know. I know. But imagine I mean, if you yeah. had like, uh, imagine if you had a hundred million dollars in ETH, like the 75 ETH doesn't actually matter, but like having the crypto punk could matter, you know, it could, could have like more utility, uh, could make you like a, a somebody, uh, in crypto Twitter or something like that, you know, which yeah. is invaluable I'm, to so many people. Right. I mean, Nick, I, you, I can you, you, Nick, you and Eric have one like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can see a future where like, um, you know, if you want to target a certain type of person, you know, culture wise, net worth wise, whatever, like in the in, in the future, like restaurants will be able to airdrop, you know, NFT coupons to, you know, punk holders. And I think like being part of that community will reap benefits long into the future. But um, I don't know if it's worth, you know, I guess bleeding against ETH over that time period, right. which it, it may well do. I hope it doesn't. You know, I really hope it doesn't. But um, I think it will we'll be do it. The eighth floor right it. now is the eighth floor like fifty yet? Like fifty no, something. No, a little. Oh, I thought it was a little less. So I look at it this way. I look at it as like forget forget ETH if you're going to do that. Like forget it completely. Like don't even compare. Like what ETH does you're probably going to like assume you're going to bleed against ETH and do it oh, because of the, the yeah, but you do it because of the branding or wow. the, the brand you want to build around it or the benefits or the, the access or you because you want to attend like Ape Fest. Like you don't do it. How for, badly for are we bleeding things. here? <laughs> <laughs> it, it depends. For a one-time cost uh, access, it's like being part of friends with benefits or something like that. Like you're paying for access ultimately. Okay. It's so a lot of access. This, it's expensive access. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So yeah, I, I have a I have a few like hesitations with the current NFT, like like a bunch of them, right? And again, like I'm sort of very long-term bullish on the, the general idea of NFTs. So there's like a few things here. One, and I think a lot of people have talked about this, is that like, are NFTs really just purely priced in ETH or do they have some tie to like real world dollars, right? In a world of like $40,000 Ethereum, which I think we will get to, is a bored ape at 50 ETH really going to trade for 2 million US dollars? You're making a very good point. That's one I thing, don't think right? so. The, the, and that's like a very primary concern to me, right? The next thing is like, I go, okay, like what are people buying NFTs doing? Like they're, they're sort of like, they're, they're, they're flexing, they're, they're paying for access to like gated communities and, and that sort of thing, right? Or buying art. And then I try to look at like comps in the real world that approach that, right? Like mm -hmm. The cost of a board ape is more than like the initiation fee at like the most exclusive country clubs like in town. It might even be more than the initiation fee at like LA country. Like there's like so many, uh, right? So, and sure, we're, we're making up some of these arguments for why that's rational. And I think to some degree, some of these arguments are rational. There is the argument that like NFTs are better than art on your wall in your home because like the art on your Twitter profile gets viewed like 10,000 times more than the art on your wall. And I think that is like valid, right? But I don't know if the way that humans are paying for status is going to really dissociate that much from what we do in the real world. So that's like another worry I have. The, the other worry I have, I have like a number of these worries, so I'll just, I'll just keep going here. Another worry I have is that <laughs> NFTs are just inherently inflationary. There's no limit mm. on the amount of profile picks people can make, right? And I do think there's tremendous demand for profile picks. And, you know, I, I think that's like a thing people want. I totally get why people want to buy that, belong to the community and flex and everything. But like, 
I think the fact that there's just this like extreme bifurcation right now where there's just like one or two like really premium projects and everything else is just like dog shit basically like i wouldn't really want to own anything other than an ape or a punk right as a profile pic project to be on, spoken as a guy with a penguin as his profile picture um but <laughs> but like in the, for the long term like i like that's like I, I don't even know if i'm like comfortable with those long term right but as more of the like maybe people are just paying 200k for an ape just because there are no better options like what the hell else are you gonna be gonna flex like a creature as like your profile pic and I don't know it seems kind of dumb I think everything else is just kind of dumb but like what if 10 other like really cool projects come out and they gain a bunch of traction like aren't they gonna like eat into some of that ape share right and then there's also this weird mechanic right now where nfts have this like insane demand and people want to participate in them but they have this sort of like step function built into them because gas and minting is so high right like it could be that the fair market for the vast majority of these NFTs is like 0.01 ETH. But it makes no rational like sense, rational sense to have an asset that trades at 0.01 ETH when it costs 0.03 ETH to trade and mint it. it doesn't make any right. sense. So what we end up with are these lotto tickets that bifurcate into like extreme value or just go to zero. And maybe in a world where like everything is like much cheaper to mint, there's this like smoother distribution of like NFT prices and that like kind of pull stuff at the the top down a little bit. I don't know if that'll extend all the way to punks, but I could certainly see it extending to 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 apes. And I, I'm not trying to hate on apes. And I tried to buy an ape like a few weeks ago, and I I think it's cool and I think it's potential. There's just a ton of risk there, and I I just don't know like it seems very high probability that we're looking back in 10 years like even if apes double again and eth doubles in price we're gonna be like you remember when people were spending two and a half million dollars for like a picture of like a monkey you know and we might it'll it it's so funny how these things seem so dumb and obvious in retrospect and in the present moment we all like convince ourselves that it's like normal and it's such a fine line so, between like new paradigm and like just complete stupidity right so so speaking of that um I feel like Eric, you have like very clear sort of like, you know, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. You probably have a better word for it, but I feel like it's like just general like inner principles on your stance on this. You're not one to get like pulled into the waves of FOMO so easily like other people. And maybe it's because of your crypto CFA sort of like background and the way you look at these things. But I'm just, I, I don't know. I mean, like we've talked about it a little bit, but like how do you th avoid the FOMO of going into these realms of so-called like opportunity of like you want the profile picture. You participate, by the way. You have a crypto punk. <laughs> but like you, you, you have this like threshold of like limiting yourself and like controlling yourself how do you how do you do that and what's your thinking i think that's what you said uh is a big part of it i have a crypto punk already i don't want like to get overexposed like already having crypto punk is so much exposure to these stupid ass jpegs that like when people are trying to do more and more it's like i already got, i got enough i got plenty um so you know we still do it for fun here and there but i'm not minting uh 65 sheep you know i got three things and got a wolf you know and get out of there yep that's very hard to do for most <laughs> yeah, people. No, no clue. and honestly <laughs> uh, uh, you know getting only three sheep and a wolf was actually the worst move of my life could have could have made way more money <laughs> i think it's a but you don't yes. you also don't have a problem with that you never you're never one to be like oh fuck like I missed out. I should have had more. Like I sold too early. Like I've never heard you say that. Well, You're like, we, we great. Made more, I made money. <laughs> generated more ETH out of it. So I'm just I'm maximizing for coins. And you get, you get more ETH over time. That's a good place. I think that's where I want to be. That's your game. I think that's a very wise game. Yeah, for sure. Nick, coins. Stack them up. More coins is the game. Um, but I mean, it really. I, I think, Stephen, like the way you laid that out, by the way, was 
I needed to hear that personally. That was really good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, it may like age terribly the, in like six months. A lot of, lot of concerns, um, <laughs> but really well <laughs> laid out. <laughs> a lot of concerns, but very valid concerns. And also like the PSA part is, I think, like really, truly important when you're stepping into this, because for most people, that is their their first exposure yeah. to, to any of this. It's their first, it's their first exposure in general to an asset that doesn't have exit liquidity, right? Like you're used Ooh. to buying a stock and when the stock goes down, you can always sell it, right? NFTs like, and this hasn't really happened. I mean, it's sort of, we had like a mini bear, I guess. Art blocks got pretty wrecked, but like stuff can go like zero bid and that's just over. Like, and it's just everybody like undercutting each other for months or years, just trying to get out and there's no liquidity and there's no bidders. That'd be like a horrible feeling to have. So anybody buying this stuff should like ask them what it would feel like if all of their shit just went zero bid tomorrow. And if it would feel like really bad, then like sell pair well, back a little bit of risk. Cause it's like, it's well, definitely look, I should, a possibility. I should probably like mention this. Um, cause it's a really good example. So my first, exposure to nfts was so rare okay mm. and so rare is a really interesting concept but they're basically they're nfts of soccer players football right european soccer uh each player is essentially an nft there's a limited supply of them there's different levels of them some of them are unique one of ones some of them are one of a hundred or one of a thousand my entry point into this was at an all-time high in ETH terms, okay? And uh, luckily, I didn't use ETH to get in. I used dollars. Mm. And when I got in, uh, let's just say, for example, just to give you guys like like dollar and ETH terms here, like I spent, uh, for example, on like a Neymar, I think I spent seven ETH in March I, in total, I spent a hundred thousand dollars. I called this my hundred thousand dollar experiment, and it's a fucking crazy experiment well, for a person new to yeah. NFTs. Right? It's a, it's a crazy <laughs> experiment. I would never, by the way, this is not financial advice. You should never blah blah blah. Like any all of that. Like this was the craziest thing I've ever done in my life for me in particular. That has a very low risk tolerance. Doesn't gamble. Doesn't even like casinos. Doesn't do any of that stuff. But I wanted to learn. And I had conviction in this. Long story short, it, not only did it bleed against ETH tremendously, but like I'm just lucky that I actually came in with dollars because selling in ETH on the platform got me out in dollar equivalent equal to the dollars I put in. Nice. So I'm very lucky. I'm very yeah. lucky. Yeah, thank God that my $100,000 <laughs> experiment didn't go to zero. But can you imagine if I'd bought the Neymar for which I sold, bought at 70th, sold for 1.6, bought the, and I, I don't even need to go through all the player names, but I think I sold most of them for approximately 20% of what I bought them. But ETH ripped. That's ETH. Right. right. That it's, would have been right. yeah. devastating, devastating if I had actually used my my ETH to do that. Optimize for so, coins, always. Optimize for coins. Yeah. yeah, and maybe this is something to to, to maybe end on or like a, the topic at least, but I think the, the key is that, you know, we all want to like 10X in the short term, right? We all want to make, you know, a, a fat return in the next year or two. But I think what we really don't want to do is miss out the, I think the clear potential 100X over the next 10 years. Right. Like it would be stupid of right. us to chase these like 10 X's every single year that come up, but you miss the like macro 100 X that's like clear in front of you right now, staring you in the face. So I think, you know, play test experiment, but like make sure you're always uh, moving towards that like longer term thesis, which is, you know, rare that like, at least for us in our, in our thirties, you know, we get a chance to like see that opportunity clear in front of us and take advantage of it, you know, like, um, so I, I just, I just, that's what I keep reminding myself. Like I really do not want to miss that 10 year hundred X mm -hmm. or whatever, which is, you know, or even if it's a 10 X, whatever, hundred percent annual return, it sounds good to me. So yeah. that, that, I mean, that's a good point for people to keep in mind who are coming into the market now. Like it, it's like a generalized sort of meme in crypto that like you don't really make it in your first cycle. 
and you should be very very like liberal with like taking profits and like if, if you're trading right if you're just buying bitcoin then just never sell it it's like i feel like it doesn't make any sense to sell bitcoin it's not like that volatile the tax implications especially in california are like awful and you should be investing with like a multi-decade time horizon right if you're buying like Solana, like, yeah, I get why you might not be buying that for the next 40 years or something. And maybe you want to sell it. And it's a sort of different story, right? But generally speaking, in your first cycle, if it's like your first foray into crypto and you're trading, like you're trying to run stuff up, you're gambling, you're not like long-term investing that portion of your portfolio, like you are not at the point in the cycle where you should be like getting super aggressive. Like, yes, ETH could theoretically 5X from here. I, I don't think it will, you know, like I'm personally going to be really happy with like another double up, you know, over the next year or two, which is pretty conservative in crypto land because Bitcoin has annualized returns of like 177%, I think. Um, and you can certainly get like higher returns than that if the cycle goes on, like going farther out down the risk curve, but it's very hard to sell. Like when things are going up, this is true in NFTs. It's true in everything. But you have to keep that in the back of your mind. Like if you're making money and you're new and you're not in like Bitcoin and Ethereum, you're probably just getting lucky to a degree. You probably should be aware of that. You should take some money. And even if you miss part of the gains, like it's way better to just survive till the next go around and to have like the cash to like buy blood when everybody's like dying in the streets again. There's no worse feeling in the world than bag holding everything all the way down like 90 percent you have no cash to redeploy it's just like it's just like terrible so you know have some humility about like your abilities and where you're coming in and just you know be be careful like if you think it's going to triple you know sell when it goes one and a half x or sell a little bit the entirety of the way up even it does even though it doesn't seem like a lot at the time like it it will, you know, feel good in the end when, when and if things like totally tank on you. And again, this is not like trading Bitcoin, Ethereum advice. I think people probably not financial mm -hmm. advice, but I think like stuff like that, like you probably should just be holding forever. I just know that people out there want to gamble. They want to buy Shiba Inu. They want to buy all this dumb shit and try to like a hundred X and that's fine. Like if that's what you want to do, it's free country. You can do what you want with your money, especially if it's like a small amount, but like, don't get caught back holding. You're you're not early. You're not early for this cycle. You're definitely not early with like, you know, shit coins and, and meme coins, you know? And that's my piece. I, I like it. Anyone have anything to add? I think that's a good place to tie the bow. <laughs> yeah, me too. I like it. We did it, boys. We're doing it. We're doing it. One love. That's a wrap. Peace. Join right, us next time.